Well, I'm delighted to introduce my friend Steve Jones. I've had lots of adventures with him uh, growing up with him, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, especially on the back row back there, ha have had adventures with him, and um, several of the family members are here, and we're delighted to have you. Steve, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here today. What a crap. And I see some real famous people back here as far as Paul and Ken are concerned. And, uh, today we're going to talk about the families of racing in Paul and Ken. There's all kinds of different racing. Uh, you got car racing, motorcycle racing, boat racing, um, quarter midges, all kinds. I'm kind of going to go through it and talk about the family. And uh, Freddie wanted me to talk about the first race in Powell County. And uh, that's kind of a made up story. But uh, what we, we talked about was uh, our grandfather and Stephen Crew's grandfather had a race, and the winner got the, the hand of the lady. <laughs> And our grandfather won the race. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna start in. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the uh, <coughs> the old time racing. And when I when I talk about old time racing, we're gonna talk about in the fifties. In uh, 1955. Two big things happened in Holland County. Number one, the Aikens, the Aiken family, and some of us here today, opened the uh, Dallas Speedboat. And it was located uh, out on 61 before we get to the high school on the right behind the Hilltop Apartments there. And the other big thing that happened in, in motor racing at that same year was uh, Marvin Jones opened Red's Drag Strip with his daughters here today, too. And those two uh, venues actually started a monsoon of racing in Pollard County. And uh, later on, uh, Marvin's, Marvin's Drag Strip was called Red's Drag Strip. And later on, the Hardys, Paul <coughs> Hardy, uh, leased it from Marvin. And, uh, and changed the name of to Southeastern International. And uh, it became a, 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 a giant bent venue in the drag racing community. And uh, lots of lots of people in Pollard County participated in it. I see one of them back there in the back, the Hunter Boys, Roller and Austell, they've always bought hot rods over there. And, uh, uh, Donald and them, but they were in the quarter midget racing and drag racing and all kinds of people just can't believe all the stuff that's involved in racing. And uh, I'm going to, I've got a slide show here and they got some families in racing and, and I'm, I'm going to go with the, the old, the stock car racing. And uh, let's see, old time stock car racing. Let me see. <coughs> Wilbur Now, uh, That's my dad's car. And uh, they started racing my dad with uh, Joe Jones. And he was originally the Pontiac dealer after World War II here in Dallas. And he was the youngest Pontiac dealer in the United States. And he was the GMC truck dealer. And in 1955, he bought Butler Ford. And he couldn't be dual dealers back then, so he sold his Pontiac GMC dealership to his brother, Marvin, who had the drag strip. Well, Marvin opened that dealership, and two years later, Marvin bought Bud Mall Chevrolet. And so then he had the Chevrolet dealership, too. And, uh, in 55, Dad had gone to the uh, uh, Ford dealership, and, and he became a factory-sponsored <coughs> car owner and builder. 
four motor companies sponsored him for uh, from 55, 56, and 57. And uh, built some wonderful race cars. And uh, we, we had, a, had a wonderful time back then. And here's a couple more. They had different classes back then. That, that, the, the car you saw before was in the convertible stock car class. They had hard tops and they had convertible. These were sportsman cars. And uh, Thomas Aiken was the sportsman championship. He drove a car like that. And these were modified cars. And Freddie Fryer <coughs> drove this car. <coughs> Daddy had five drivers over his, his, his uh, period at that time that are now in the NASCAR and the, in the Georgia Automobile Racing Hall of Fame. And Wilbur was one of them. <coughs> Sonny, the guy that drove this car is Freddie Fryer. He's in it. Uh, Sonny Black's in it, drove a car. Jack Smith is in it, drove a car. And Tiny Lum drove a car for Daddy. Mm -hmm. He's in it. And, uh, <coughs> Most of these cars were run on dirt, except the only paved track that they party ever ran on was at the Peach Bowl. And the Peach Bowl was down in Atlanta on Harrell Avenue. And uh, there's people here today that raced it, 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 it on the Peach Bowl. And uh, I never I never drove on the Peach Bowl my tracks myself, but uh, a lot of people here did and uh, uh, of course Benny Rakestraw and Wilbur and George Osbrook and uh, uh, Clifford Lee. Y'all remember Clifford Lee? Clifford drove down there and all the Sheltons. There's Gene Shelton and and uh, they're here and just just <coughs> hundreds and hundreds of them just drove down to Peach Bowl. It was a wonderful track. Uh, I'm gonna tell a little funny story. This car here is one of my favorite cars. And they ran the Peach Bowl on Sunday night. So my mama wouldn't let me go because I had to go to school on Monday morning. And we just lived up the road from the dealership here, and I knew what time it was leaving, so I'd slip out the basement door. And I'd go down there, and I'd crawl in the back of this car and hide. And they towed them with tow bars down to the Peach Bowl. And uh, so I, I would kind of peep out the window when it would get halfway. I get in the seat and I take the helmet, I put a helmet on and I play it. Finally, somebody looked back and they see me back there. Well, back then they didn't have cell phones, so they'd have to pull over and find a, 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 a pay phone. And Daddy calls, they were Steve, I got Steve. And I knew I'd get a whipping when I got home, but that was the price of the admission. <laughs> <laughs> they finally got to when they before they leave and search all the cars. Make sure <laughs> <they're all right. coughs> all right, and this is this picture is made at the Dallas Speedboat. This is Wilbur, and this is George Osbrook, and this is Benny Rakestraw. Daddy had these two cars. Talmadge Cochran from uh, Burnt Hickory on this car. Talmadge was in the lumber business. And uh, of course, it's got Grail Motors on there. That's some of the Grails from right here in, in, in Dallas. This, this was a really good, all these three cars were something to contend with. They were really great race cars. And uh, we'll talk more about Benny, but if you see this, here it says Jones and Black Stock, distributors of pure oil. My dad and his, his uh, brother in law, J.B. Black Stock, was a pure oil distributor <coughs> over here. And he eventually became commissioner of his Paul. And I'm uh, <coughs> start to race because this is another car dad dad had. This is Gober Soldier Wilson. I forgot who that was. He was a famous guy. 
even if you notice, that's an old Crown Victoria. Mm -hmm. And uh, that car actually won the, uh, they used to run a road course in Fireman, Georgia, and that car actually won the Fireman Road Race. I've got, to, I still got the trophy for that. Down uh, Speedo was a fun place to go to. And here's a few trophies that Wilbur had. And uh, you notice the safety equipment that they used to, <laughs> to keep the doors from flying apart. They put a chain in a lock. <laughs> that, was, that was state of the art equipment, safety equipment. <laughs> I yeah. think leather belt shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leather belt, leather belt. <laughs> and, uh, Wilbur uh, was a great driver, and I, I'm going to kind of get out of the sink here just a little bit, but talking about safety equipment. Wilbur, I'll show you a news article here a little bit later about Wilbur. It was in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. said he was had a jinx going to Lakewood. Wilbur put a one of Dad's cars off in the lake at Lakewood. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uh, was the only car that I can remember my, my dad had that had a supercharger on it. And it was a, and when it went off in there, they finally found it. And it really wasn't actually a lake, it was a cesspool. It looked like a lake. <laughs> and, uh, I came, I got out of school on a Monday after that and went down and, and uh, the day I was down there and I was asking about how the, would the car survive and he said, well, it told it. He said, I've got to get some stuff off of it. He said, you need to get a garden hose and go back there and wash it off and we get the stuff out of that. So I went back, I thought it wasn't going to be no big deal. So I go back there and to wash it. And I started gagging, and finally, the only way I could wash it was holding it over and holding it <laughs> I mean, that thing was it was bad. But uh, he didn't get typhoid fever or nothing like that from it, so I, I guess it was all right. And here is, this is Wilbur, and this is George Osbrook. George Osbrook had a shop over 92 going out of Hiram. And George, Built many race cars, drove dad's cars. He was an absolutely fantastic race car driver and builder. And a really good guy all the way around. And had a, had a well, wonderful dealership. I mean, a junkyard and service department and everything else over to his shop. And I missed, I missed him too, guys, right there. And, uh, <coughs> I could tell you a lot of racing tales about George uh, and Wilbur both, but George was was a, a really a, a great, great race car driver. And there's him in his convertible. I said they ran two divisions back then: uh, convertible and notice the roll cage. It doesn't quite cover his head. But, uh, that's just the way that they they were back then. They didn't have no, no loop in front, just a regular, uh, just one little, little place back there. All right, now this was made at uh, Peach Bowl, and uh, that's Freddie Fryer. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Peach Bowl a little bit later on, but uh, this is one of my favorite cars. These were flathead cars with multi carburetors on. Those engines were built by Boots Johnson. And Boots worked my dad. And uh, actually, Boots taught me how to build engines. And uh, uh, Boots always uh, had, a, had winning engines, and he was a pretty great engine builder. Now, this picture is a strange picture. People look at it, and they don't really understand ever been there. This is Daytona Beach. And back in Daytona, back when you used to, in the old days, when they raced on the beach, you bring your cars to the uh, National Guard Pavilion, and that's where they were inspected. And uh, 
if you passed the inspection, then on qualifying day, you drove your car from down through Daytona Beach out to the beach, and you, you're driving south on the beach, and you're going up to where they do the, the flying mile, the world speed record, and you run through a mile through there, and you run down the beach, you turn around, and then you run back up the beach. And they average the two together because you got a tailwind on one way and you got a head on the other way. And the average together in whatever speed you got, that's how you started the race. That's how you qualified it. And the people don't know that. But these cars are heated up to the problem. Yeah. And later on I'll show you another picture to get a good idea of, of, of uh, how that is, but they're going the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, there's, this is my dad, of course that's Wilbur and George, and that's the old uh, four place building. It used to be the Pontiac dealership. Now it's, it's still, it's in the forks of the road just right over the hill. Uh, it's still there. Now this race was, this is this was at, at Lakewood Speedway. Uh, Wilbur won, uh, they had a hundred lap big race there. Wilbur won it in the convertible. That's Wilbur. That's my dad. And this is John, his name is John Casanova or something like that. And he is president of what they call MARC. And that's the Midwest Automobile Racing Association. And back then, you had NASCAR and then you had ARCA and then you had MARCA. And, and probably four or five other ones, and they, they promoted races, and they all kind of intertwined. They wasn't one just great big NASCAR racer. You know, you, you might go to one part of the, the eastern U.S. and be a, a different sanction, and you might go to the west and be a different sanction. So it's just, your trophies will say different things, but they're not all, they wasn't all NASCAR back in those days. NASCAR was founded in 1948, and they they didn't really get big until I'm gonna say around 57, 58 they started started getting getting big. Now <laughs> you see this? This is on the back of a picture. I have to come back to it, but we had a we had a, a, a preacher. At the First Baptist Church, his name was Benny Peacock. Now, I don't know if anybody, y'all ever remember Benny Peacock. But Benny Peacock, he, he, was a, he loved racing. And I've got, I'll show you the picture in just a minute. But they were making <coughs> photographs of the uh, race cars and the drivers and down, down to the full place. And Benny was down there, and he put on a helmet and got in one of his cars had a picture of me. <coughs> And uh, I'm going to show you the picture in a minute. But on the back of the picture, Daddy wrote this, what happened. And the woman, the, the people in the back of the picture said, uh, asked him, did he drive that car? And the preacher said, his mama didn't raise no damn food. <laughs> <laughs> but Benny, he would, he would go preaching. Back then, we didn't have air conditioning in the church. And the, the, the Dallas Speedboat, they'd race on Sunday afternoon and they'd start qualifying about 1.30, 2 o'clock. Well, <coughs> Benny would get to carry it on and he'd get, when he took his watch off, he knew he was going to be there a while. <coughs> and <coughs> Danny and them, they, they wanted to go racing so they, when he got about 12, 15, They'd have all the race cars down the floor plate crank up and they'd come by the church. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd make all the rackets they could make. And they'd go by there and, and, and the preacher would peek up. He'd be a preacher and he'd he, he do cars and he'd say, in conclusion. <laughs> so that, that's, that's the old floor plate building right there. <clears throat> that's Wilbur, uh, Hall of Fame driver from Paulding County. Uh, 
his uh, wife, Trish, had worked for my dad, too, and uh, his brother-in-law, Thomas Aiken. And uh, Thomas, uh, he came to the Aiken that had the racetrack over there, and uh, <coughs> missed, I missed him. And this is Benny Rakestraw. And Benny, he won the racetraw. They were all the racetraws from higher. Any race draw here today? I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm seeing. Anyway, were they brothers? Were they brothers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, Benny, he, like, he drove the number 12 cars, and, and later on, uh, they had Berkeley's. And uh, they got their Berkeley's from uh, California from uh, Bill Stroke, and they were factory back Berkeley's. And, Really, really super duper car. They were about the, the trickiest cars you would get back in the in the day. And uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> and this is Dallas Speedboat again. And, and like I said, that you've seen part of this picture before. That's the, the Crown Victoria when we're down. All right, now this picture. This is a, this picture was made the first year that they ran it on the big speedway at, at Daytona. And uh, they had uh, <coughs> two different classes. You see, notice some of these cars with hard tops. That's Fireball Roberts there in that pond. He won the race. They had two different divisions. They had convertibles and hard tops. <coughs> well, they didn't know a whole lot about air, aerodynamics back then, so they started qualifying, and all the convertible cars were 15 mile an hour slower than the hard tops. So everybody started putting the hard top back on. You could you could take the tops off of these, and uh, <coughs> the NASCAR came around and said, "What are y'all doing?" I said, well, "We can't, you know, we're getting them bashed." <coughs> they said, "Well, you, we got to have a convertible class, you know." They, that's part of the outside. They said, well, no, we don't want to do that. They said, well, I'll tell you what. So you leave your top off, we'll give you $300. And $300 back in that day was like $3,000. I mean, that was a lot of money. So you see the convertible guys, and they were getting lapped. And, uh, but, but anyway, that's, this is a Joe Dog book right here. And this is Beanie sees in a Mercury. And, uh, and then, of course, that's Fireball. Fireball won the race. Uh, I forgot who these other two are, but that was the first year that they ran on the big track in, in 1959. Right, and this is a picture of them qualified on the beach in the Flying Mile. And, uh, during the races, they, of course, they raced the other way, but they, they raced on the A1A and then they raced on the beach. And the tire got hot, they'd go out here and get in the water and cool the tire. <laughs> of course, they'd slow them down a little bit, but you know, the cooler tires on, on the pavement would make them, make them run a little bit faster. Now, this is a picture that was in the paper. And I'm going to. I don't know exactly where that picture was made. It was made either at the Peach Bowl or either at the uh, Camp. And uh, that's one of the first races my dad and them won with, that, with the sportsman car there. Right? Don't know who these two guys were. They, they, they look familiar, but I, I don't know who they, who they are. All right, this, I'm gonna skip this one. Uh, he, see, these are the Atlanta Journal in 1958. This is back when the rank ran on the beach. And I've got some, some other articles here that I'm going to show in a minute. But uh, <coughs> Jack drove for Dad, and, and this is Will. This is Will's car right here. Uh, when, when you come into in the turns of the beach, they were on the, the sand part. They'd get ruts in them like you wouldn't believe. <clears throat> Finally, they'd get so, they'd get so rutted that they'd, they'd, people just crash. 
and that's a picture of Wilbur in 1958 crashing in the, at the beach at Daytona. And here's a, another one uh, talking about the uh, uh, Lakewood race. And here's Benny. And I've got to tell this tale. This, this, this car here was, was a, a Bill Strobe car from California. And they went to Daytona with the, the 12 car, the, the Ford. And they found this car was up for sale. Well, Tamish Cochran got on an airplane, and this is what they tell me. I, I didn't see him get on it, but flew back to Atlanta, went to Fort Hickory, sold a piece of property, caught a plane back, went to Daytona, and bought that car. And, and, and anyway, Benny, uh, and this is in 58, he uh, <laughs> qualified that car right up front. And they started the race, and it got down to the first turn on the first lap, and he crashed. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and they asked Benny, said, what happened? He said, well, my breaking point was the hot dog stand and said, somebody moved the hot dog stand. <laughs> 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 and, uh, that's the excuse he had. You know? <laughs> and now uh, this, this is in Lakewood. And <clears throat> see, it says, break stop and jinx in Lakewood. Well, they talk about... Uh, uh, him crashing the car into the lake, and this is in a, another convertible that Dad had, and I want you to look at the, the precise roll bars I have. These are water pipes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the way they were back then. They, the cars weren't real safe. But uh, that was a, a big race at Wilbur one there at, at Lakewood. And uh, we'll talk more about Lakewood in a minute, but uh, uh, that's the Wilbur then. Now here, here, uh, here's the horsepower of the racing, a lot of it. Well, this is Charles Hardy, and he's the 500-pound gorilla in the room when it comes to weight racing. This is Marvin. Uh, he had the Chevrolet place and red drag strip. This is Wilbur. This is George. That's Thomas Aiken. This is Libby Upchurch, and Lou's still alive. And this is Charlie Stone, he's from uh, Dallas. And all of these, Charlie's a Hall of Fame guy, Wilbur's Hall of Fame guy. Uh, these two should probably gonna be in the Hall of Fame one of these days. And uh, <coughs> Charles, he started racing, uh, drag racing, at, uh, Red drag strip had a little old angle forward with a V8 motor in it. And uh, did real well with it and kept going on finally. He leased the drag strip, had some fine drag cars, and then got into automobile racing and wound up with the Ed Hardy Elliott racing. The McDonald's sponsor and they actually won a NASCAR race at the real side. And, uh, had multi trucks. I've got pictures of some of his trucks here later on. And uh, anyway, these are real powerful family figures from a, from the racing in Paulding County. And these, this is a picture from the Dallas dealer, and uh, shows some of the old cars and all that. Now this is a picture. I never saw this picture until last week. And. Uh, this is George Allenbrook, and this looks like a 61 Ford with Puckett's body works on it from Dallas, Georgia. And I don't know where it was made. Daytona. Was it made in Daytona? Well, he's on fire. I don't know what happened, but the car caught on fire, and that's George getting the heck out of town. <laughs> 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 but uh, I guess that is a 61 Ford. It looks like a 61. It is. So. And, uh, all right, now this is an interesting picture here. This, this is 
where they qualify for the races. Now, now this is the NASCAR people. They, and I'll tell you why I've got this picture. This, when, during that speed week, they have a flying mile world speed record. And, and they, they, they set the, if you outrun everybody, you'll set the world speed record. This car here set the world speed record. <coughs> it's Black Thunderbird. And when it did, Marvin, this, this was in 56, and Marvin had the drag strip, and he wanted a hot rod <laughs> to, to try, you know, to take to the drag strip. Well, this car set a world speed record of 152 miles an hour. Yeah, 152, ran 156 with a tail wind and 148, I believe, with the head wind. Well, he found the guy that owned this car after the, the and, and asked him what he said. And the guy said, well, I'm done with it. He said, yeah, I said it. He said, no, I've got to keep my seat. And he said, it's all stripped down. So Marvin bought it from him and drove that car back to Dallas, Georgia, and there wasn't no interstate, sitting on a Coca-Cola crate. <laughs> and he, uh, the guy sent him he, the, the parts to make a street, you know, all the stuff he took all of. But one day this truck drives up at Chevrolet place and got this gigantic box on it. He said, one do-it-yourself T-bird kit. <laughs> and it's got the top and the interior and all that stuff. Well, they put it back together, and Marvin races it at the drag strip, and it's a bad dude over there, too. And he, Marvin builds a, a car that Jack Burroff drove for him called the Dragon Wagon. And I, if anybody knows where you can get a picture of that car, I want a picture. I don't have one. So Jack Murdoch drove, I think Jack was married to Sammy Cole's <coughs> sister at one time. And, uh, but anyway, when he built a dragon wagon, he didn't have any use for this, so he sold this car to my dad. And when I was in high school, I drove that car in high school. Wow. <laughs> and it had a plaque on it that said, Whirlwind Spirit. If I had it today, it would probably be worth half a million dollars. <laughs> But it, you know, that's that's one reason I had that picture now, but that's that's how they qualify. All right, now this is a picture of the grandstand of Dallas Speedboat. Mm -hmm. Now that's a nice grandstand. I'm up there somewhere, I think I'm right here. But anyway, the five is on. <laughs> <laughs> See, see, you know that's an Aiken right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> Jody. Jody. Yeah, that's Jody. And, and I see some kin folks back there in the back. And uh, I think one of these is Fred. I believe that the sports shirt is Uncle LD, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, and, and I'm going to pull off here to the right. You see the tall guy with the hat on? That is Guy Thompson. <laughs> now, Guy always used to to hang around with us, and I've got to tell to tell about Guy. Wherever you went, Guy went when we were racing. Well, they had and them had gone off racing somewhere, and Wilbur or George or somebody had made a boneheaded move and lost the race. And we and Guy was mad. And, and they got back and he said, well, he, he could drive a car better than that. He said that anybody could drive. Well, he kept on and on. Well, my dad come up by the time we got to Arvin, and he always had two or three extra race cars laying around. And one of them said, Guy said he can drive out and drive better than that. Can he have to drive one of your cars next week? And they said, yeah. He said, I'll get it. We'll let her do it. And the guy said, well, I'll drive it, I'll show him. So they get this car, and one of the spare cars, and they <coughs> re-letter it up and put the guy's name and, uh, <coughs> up over the driver's door. <coughs> well, anyway, after they get lettered up, 
grandpa come down the shop and I stand there looking at it. Daddy says, what are you looking at? I said, who, who let her get car? He told me. He said, why do you have? I said, they spell idiot wrong. <laughs> <laughs> idiot Thomas was up there. So after they spell that wrong for the next year that everybody called guy I Doc Thomas. <laughs>
and I don't know if y'all know Wesley, but Wesley owned an American Corvette in Tyler Springs. They did restoration work. And Wesley did some restoration work on uh, some of the called big tank cars. And they were factory Corvettes. And he had this car sitting out, and I don't know what he was going to do with it. And I wanted a car to run in the B gas class, and I bought this car without an engine and gave $50 for it. <laughs> Ain't no tell what it'd be worth out. And as a matter of fact, I traded to Jerry Bullet back there in the bank. Jerry kept it for a while, had a 427, had one of Daddy's old fast car motor 427s in it. It was a bad dude. And we ran it over to the drag strip. We were the warm up show for the funny cars. Back and when the drag race back in the days, you'd have the stock cars to race, and you'd have the uh, super sports, and then you keep getting faster, you'd have modifies, and then you'd have the gassers, and you'd have the funny cars. Well, this was a warm up show for the funny cars of the drag strip. That is Hubert Clay. Hubert wasn't from Dallas, but he stayed here in Dallas a while him and Randy Payne, and they were the superstars of the drag racing convention for four. And the reason I put these pictures of him in there, back in the, the days, if, if they were ready to the hot shot, they'd get these cars, like that right there, and they'd build them, but they had to get a body, and they were factory uh, back cars. Well, they would send, they call them bodies in white to my dad. And they would build just a body shell with no insulation, no nothing, half, just half the stuff put in them with a really lightweight. And Hubert and Randy and them would pick their cars up from daddy and take them to the shop and, and get them fixed. Randy and, and uh, Hubert both were Hall of Famers. Uh, really, really great. Really great people. Now this is a picture of a really rare car. I've got to tell this tale. That car is a Chevelle <coughs> Z16. <coughs> they made 200 of them. Hoff Cartwright on Bonanza had one of them. And they had 396 engines in them. And they were all four speeds. The only other one I saw, Trix Carroll had one. Uh, this car here, and I'm going to tell you the tale about this, this is a drag strip. <laughs> he had a, this was a kind of a show car, if you see it, it says Chipwood, uh, Joey Chipwood, and Thrill Show, or whatever. Well, they had a, this gigantic flame throwing <clears throat> turbocharged something, they'd throw fire out a hundred feet behind and make all this racket. It's supposed to make it go fight. Everybody had it. But anyway, they got ready to run this thing, and me and Billy Joe Sexton, I don't know if y'all know Billy Joe, he's a black guy. He built like Arnold Schwarzenegger, as if he's stronger. <laughs> and me and Billy was up at the start finish line. I was running a record that night, and we were sitting there talking. Well, they fired this thing up. And it was blowing fire everywhere. He took takes off coming down the strip and he gets about three quarters of the way down and something happened. And it locked it. Well it started barrel rolling and it turned and flips and it wound up about as far as here that did from us. Mm -hmm. Upside down and this thing back in the back still blowing fire everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was fixing to blow up. Well, we didn't, the guy was still in it. So somehow or another, I got the door open. And Billy Joe reaches in there and gets him and pulls him in the seat and everything <laughs> out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, that's all that's left of a, a quarter million dollar Z16. And that happens in drag racing, believe it or not. Uh, I'm just talking to John Clark. We got John back here, graduation. John Clark was one of the, uh, 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 John is Sandy Clark's brother. Y'all know Sandy, but that's 
but don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this picture was made at Daytona in 1968. <clears throat> and Marvin and uh, Charles Hardy put on the uh, Winter National Drag Race in Bruce Creek Airport, and all a bunch of us from Holland County went down and, and helped promote the thing, and we worked it and, you know, the gates and setups and everything. This is a 68 Mustang that I had, and uh, Guy Thompson, this is Marvin's car, but Guy drove this car down there, but these, these were the cars down there. <coughs> and, uh, but, uh, <coughs> Uh, they had spectators everywhere and uh, made, made a lot of money. And the reason I put that in there, the morning after that race, they did real well on that race. And we were staying, I think, in Hawaii in the end or somewhere in the other world. Marvin and Charles were going to go back and Charles had a brand new 427 <coughs> Him and Marvin go get in the Corvette and they walk out and they got three suitcases full of cash. And put in this Corvette and they get in it and I, well, I'm standing there in the parking lot and Charles full boards it and starts turning around and around and he's making so much smoke he can't even see the parking lot with a police driver. And the police is standing there watching him. He gets out and he says, what's going on? I says, it, this is too complicated to explain. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he didn't give him a ticket. He gave him a good tongue lash. Yeah. But uh, th th this was a, this was a really big deal in, in uh, 1968. Before you change that one, before you change that one, Steve, that picture that he just showed you, I was in the Air Force at that time. Mail call is a big deal when you're in the military. So I got mail call, Henderson, I opened this letter from home, it's Steve's letter to me. And here I am in the military, and it's got that very picture in there, telling me, I'm on the beach in Daytona Beach with my Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a young fellow, I don't know who he is, kind of like that. But anyway, I'm in the old charter room, that's at the drag strip. You notice we don't have a whole lot of safety equipment on that, and I didn't even have my chain around the door. Mm -hmm. That's that car. It's a pretty car. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, now this is, this is an interesting character right here. His name is, is Bobby Rakestraw. He's one of the Rakestraw boys. And Bobby started out his racing career you know, running stock cars. And, uh, <coughs> Bobby was a genius when it comes to mechanics. I mean, he was an absolutely great genius. I went to his shop one time, and he was, he ran a Chevrolet that had six other engines in it. And he was over there working on something, and he had a, two V8 heads that he was mating together to make a six runner head to go on his six runner Chevrolet with V8 heads. And he did. I don't know how he did it, but he did. But later on, his wife really didn't like him running stock cars, so he started racing in drag racing and had a great career in drag racing. And the reason I've got his picture up right there, his son's raced in drag racing, and his grandson is named Ryan. And I'm going to show you some. Ryan has turned into a monster as far as Pauline County uh, linear flames go in racing. And I'll show you some stuff. But, but that, that's Bobby Rakestraw. <coughs> Good guy. You ain't going to believe this. But this car is Junior Proctor's. Junior has, has in the, been in the welding business all his life. This car set, I think, two national records, speed records. This is one fantastic thing, uh, automobile. And it's well known all over the country from Baldwin County. 
Steve's that the same car he still got in his shop up there in Dallas? No, no, no. They got that, that's it's a different car. Now they they still got this car. Now this is this is Junior's son. That's a lead prop, and he's a deacon over to Maryland Church. <laughs> and uh, Lee still has this car, and. Uh, you know, it got some power, it ain't even got the wheels on the ground, so it's, it's got some horsepower to it. But uh, they, they uh, still got that car. Well, that's Junior's car again. And I've got this car in for drag racing, but uh, it's not really a drag racing car. That, that car is a world, in Daytona for the world speed record car, and it, and it almost got it. And you're not going to believe this, well you might, that car is driven by a woman named Betty Skelton. And Betty was a, a famous uh, raced airplanes. And they talked her into the, this is, this is a factory sponsored Corvette. They talked her into driving that, that car and she almost set the world speed record in that car. But that's the lady drove that car. Of course, that's the same ones we just talked about. All right, now, we're talking about drag racing again. We're talking about Bobby Rakestraw. You see this shop here? You see this? That shop is about 20 minutes, well, about 30 minutes from here. It's right below the Carswell Airport on New Harvest. That is Ryan Rakestraw's shop. He's uh, Bobby's grandson. These are what they call pro mod cars. In a thousand feet from standing still to the end of a thousand feet, these cars will go from zero to 230 miles an hour. And if you want the fastest in the world, you have to go see a Paul and County guy <laughs> because he used built and uh, <clears throat> got a got an unbelievable shop out there. Uh, Saudi princesses and all they they all come to him to get their, their cars. You know he's known all over the world. There's another shop. There's a drag trip. That's a T-shirt, fifty-five. Gene, uh, Mara daughter gave me that t-shirt. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to speak just a minute about, uh, I don't have any pictures of it, but uh, in motor racing, one of the bigger, bigger racers was in Paulin County was uh, hydroplane racer. I don't know if y'all knew that or not. But uh, we had a fella here, his name was Scott Smith. Uh, some of y'all might remember Scott. He had his, his uh, office was up right there in downtown Dallas, a book where George P. Baker's law office was. And uh, Scott was the uh, Eastern distributor for Cooney Racing Engine. And uh, they, they would use those engines on Sport racing pilot one. Well, he uh, had some friends of his that built fantastic boats. They were called the Salvers. And uh, there were two brothers, one of them named Bill and one of them named Ralph. Well, he talked them into coming to Paul and County and uh, establishing the boat building business. They'd been in the boat building business since 1926. The daddy started the Building business. And they built a building that's over there on Highlands Avenue back where the water tank is for the Dallas uh, City Water. And, and I think it's a gutter building there now. But anyway, they built a shop and started building hydroplanes over there. They shipped them all over the world. <coughs> and uh, Ralph and Bill were really great people. And I, I used to go over there, I was fascinated by what they did. Well, I was racing at the time, and they wanted, they, when they built a new boat, they had to get the, a, a driver from Indianapolis, from Indiana, to, to 
fly down and take it and test the boat over at Al Tate. And uh, they came to me one day and said, I want to know if I'd be interested in being the mother test driver. I said, well, I never drove one of those. And uh, they said, well, we'll bring the guy down from Indiana and he'll teach you how to drive. I said, you'd be interested in doing it. And me being an idiot, I said, yeah, I might try that. So they get the guy down to go to Altona. Well, to drive one of these boats, you have to drive them like you're riding a motorcycle. They're, and they're fast. They do 120 miles an hour. I mean, they're really fast. The way you make it go fast, you're laying down in it, riding like a motorcycle, on the water, doing 130 miles an hour. And you got a trim button in it. And you start running this trim button up and it pulls the nose up. And the trick is to get the, the nothing in the water but the prop. And when you do that, that's when it runs the fast. <coughs> so we go spend all day doing this and come back and they asked me, he said, uh, what do you think? He said, you want to do it? And I said, nope. <laughs> he said, I that absolutely scared me to death. I mean, it is, you're just on the edge of dying like that. And I thought, well, but that was my, that's the only experience I ever had a boat race. All right. All right, let's see, we're done drag racing. Let's go here. How about quarter music race? Quarter music. Um, quarter bit racing, the first I saw was over at Powder Springs. They had a track going into Powder Springs, and it um, been there for a long time. Don Hunter back there, his boy, and his daughter raced over there. It's my son. He raced over there. So you can start racing the quarter bitches when you're four and a half. I'm <coughs> pretty young. And uh, anyway, uh, they started, we started racing over at uh, Power Spring in 1989. Well, during that time, the four minute board, I got on the board of directors, we built a new track over Cobb County behind the Cobb County Jail. And it was the fastest quarter vision track <coughs> in the world. It was, had to be banked all the way around. The power spring was flat, but this one was banked. And it was wild. And uh, anyway, lots and lots of people from Paul and County raced quarter vision. Lots of them. And, uh, this is my youngest daughter, which is sitting right there. She was a terror. As a matter of fact, she was a, a track champion in, in the uh, light beach. And uh, I'll tell you another thing. We, she, we was racing. We used to race at the uh, World Wheels and had an indoor track. And uh, we pour Coca-Cola syrup all over the floor. When it, it gets sticky, it gets so sticky that you, you run out of your, your boots and stick to the, and you run out of your boots and the car just sticks to the bicycle and turn over. Well, anyway, we was racing there one night and they had a crash or something that about over with. And it, it, it could, I mean, hundreds of people there. They just had to line the whole fence. And, well, anyway, we stopped and I go out to push the car back up. And these guys said, man, I said, man, I said that boy here is kicking everybody's butt, man. <laughs> he can drive. And I said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, you put the race and be over in a couple of laps. Go down and tell him, hey. I said, yeah. I said, well, well. I went down there and she won the race. And, you know, they was all standing there. And she took her helmet off. And they said, oh, well, that's a girl. <laughs> 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 Corvette, there it is. That's, a, that's a, one of some of the jackets he used to wear. Ah, right, now this is a funny tale right here. That is uh, Bobby East. 
And I've got some pictures of Bobby later on. He went on to become a real successful race car driver. He's a little kid, he's about five years old, I guess. Well, this, this is one of the quarter minutes I had. And uh, anyway, I used to, uh, <coughs> his dad was Johnny, he said, the little bear. And I had a uh, gas attempt, and I'd buy gas, we'd buy gas, and I'd pay him, you know, have him run the account up. Well, I come back there one day, and Johnny said, Jones, you gonna pay me that gas bill? I said, you owe me about two or three hundred dollars. And anyway, I said, I me, I said, you want quarter midget? He said, what do you mean? He said, I'll swap you a quarter midget for that gas, baby. <laughs> and he said, well, I'm going to look at it, and it was that car. So he bought it, and uh, later on, Johnny, after all his kids started racing quarter midgets, and then they got into Legends cars, and the stock cars, and on and on, and Johnny told me, he said, you know what? I said, well, I swapped you that damn gas bill for that quarter of it. He said, that cost me $100,000. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was a good That's Bobby. And, uh, now, that's a little Stanley car there. That's a, uh, the other car is probably a, a Curtis. And, and I've got this picture in there. When you race on the, the big races, you, have, you see the paper numbers. If you ever see a quarter bitch and they got paper numbers on the cars, that's a, a big race. And uh, we had lots of them back, back in the day. I had an old, I'll tell you this tale. Had a big old cattle trailer. And uh, they haul horses in and cows. Well, we load up quarter bitches in it to get ready to go to the race. And we might have seven eight quarter bitches sitting in this cattle trailer, and I had a dually Ford pickup truck with all the kids and they get in the truck. So we head to the racetrack. Well, they kept up with everything that's going on. So anyway, we get about halfway there and they start this. Well, I'm going to win tonight. No, I'm going to win. I don't know. And then start mine. <laughs> and Karen, I'm going to doing this one day and we're going to have one of these big races in Atlanta. And anyway, they kept on and on. I said, y'all shut up. I said, why? I said, y'all know Tony Stewart's going to be here tonight, don't you? Tony was racing quarter meters back then. And then they got real quiet. So then they start back here. I'm going to run second. No, I'm going to run second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my boy. That's in the, that's in the grain track, too. The Eastern grain. Uh, that car actually belonged to Michael Glass Company. And uh, Ben had another car, and, and Michael wasn't going to race. This is a brand new car. And uh, got ready to. <coughs> I told uh, Michael, I said, I'm going to the Grand. He said, Why don't you come get my new car and try it out? So I, he gave me a brand new car. I told him he took it to the Grand. It did real good, too. And the, I still got this car. It's the only car I kill, and that's a super modified car. And uh, of course, you can change back and forth and all that. But that's the only car I still got. Uh, quarter bit is great. Uh, I was a driving instructor, and uh, when you're four and a half years old, you can start racing quarter bit. And if you don't think it's a trip teaching a four and a half year old how to drive a race car, <laughs> uh, that is a trip. <clears throat> and I uh, uh, had a bunch of uh, famous uh, uh, NASCAR people uh, come in. That two or three of them from Atlanta. What was the one that raced the, uh, the little kid that ran for a Richard Grove for Richard P. He was racing. Oh, Reed, yeah, Reed, Reed, Reed Sorrison. Sorrison. Reed, mm -hmm. Reed, I've taught Reed. Uh, that was his job in struggling with his four and a half years. What kind of engines did those things have? They, well, now, they changed today. Now, back in them days, they ran a, what they call a Deco Grand. It was an old World War II military hit miss pump. They used them to make the, anything. And the, the stock ones put out about Five, six horsepower.
but you could modify them on up. You, you, you have a stock class, then you have a modified class, then you have a, uh, a, a, a B class, which I believe even faster, and then you have a high cost class. Well, you can go anywhere from 5 horsepower up to 25 horsepower. The alcohol was about 25 horsepower. And they were all the same motors, but the <coughs> motors were modified. And uh, if you ran in the, in the alcohol class, I'll tell you how fast it was. The quarter vision track is a sixteenth of a mile. And the Atlanta track was, barrier track was banked all the way around. In the alcohol class, at the Eastern Grands, the, alcohol, the light age, the qualifying time to run that sixteenth of a mile was 5.7 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now that's big. You couldn't, all you could see is what color it was. You couldn't tell nothing else. That's how fast they are. And uh, the little kids, you wouldn't think that they could drive them, but they, they can. How many miles per hour is that? I'd have to put a calculator. It's fast. It's really fast. And you're sitting an inch off the ground, too. Now, these are real race cars. They, they're not like go cars. These aren't go cars. All this front and rear suspension, they're all adjustable. They got shocks, everything. Everything, they even got weight. You can change the weights on the wheels and change the direction. They're, they're ready. They're, they're one quarter of a midget race car. I mean, they have a full midget race car up there, just a quarter size. They have a lot of fun to work on. Uh, <coughs> uh, let's see. I don't want to go over here to this one. Motorcycle. See these guys right here? You're not going to believe this. Their granddad, his name is Fred Stokes. Fred had the Dairy Queen in Dallas. His sons was uh, uh, Gerald, Harold, Ronald, and Arnold. Yep. And <laughs> these boys were Gerald's. <laughs> Two boys. And uh, Brian and uh, uh, let's see, Brad and Brian. And they ran a race uh, factory for Suzuki. These are the only Pauling County leaders I can find for winning the Daytona races on motorcycles. And they they really did a uh, sure enough <coughs> job. And, <clears throat> Brian has still got a shop. He's over there near the shop that I just showed you a picture of where the, the race cars were over by the airport in Carsville. He's got a shop over there. And he doesn't uh, race professionally anymore. But when when the Triumph motorcycle comes out with <coughs> motorcycles, they send it to him for evaluation. And they do, you know, experimental work and all that. Still do. And the brother, I'm going to show you some pictures later on. He was so good at his doing suspension work. They won so many races. The olden suspension hire. And if you run NASCAR, the new car for NASCAR these days is called Car Tomorrow. You know, all spec car. Everything <coughs> on it. You have to get from that car. The suspension work that you get that goes on that car has to come through Fred Stokes' grandson in old. So if you, if you run a NASCAR car of tomorrow today, you have to see them to get your suspension and from Paul and Ken. Believe it or not. You run them strange things like this. That's him right there. So he's putting, getting suspension stuff out. They, these goes in, go into the cars of tomorrow. And there's one of the new cars right there. It's in the, 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 the. And 
that's them. That's for Tyler Reddy right there. That, that's he's gonna drive for uh, uh, Richard Childers next year in the, in the eight car for, for Richard. And uh, he used to race legend cars in Atlanta too. That's him on his Suzuki Daytona. Now you got you got to be some pretty brave to drive on a car. I'm on the hose line. Look at that. But that is Fred Stokes' grandson. And there's Fred right there. That's the motorcycle driver. That's the suspension guy right there. How about that? They, they, look at that. And that's on dirt. That ain't on asphalt. Can you play all them trophies? <coughs> <coughs> That's Paul and Kenny Leonard. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah. 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 Right. Now, let's get into Tell you something about her too. Mm -hmm. And Gene Shelton, Shelton Director Service. Yeah, that's at the Peach Bowl. I mean, it looks like. And, it is. Uh, Gene started mm -hmm. racing in the Shelton family over there, four generations, and all four were successful racing drivers. Mm -hmm. All four. And Zach, he was here a while ago. I told his brother running but Zach, I showed you some pictures of Zach's car in a minute. Uh, Zach's went there, winner of the Ice Bowl over at Talladega, and, mm -hmm. and they they have won so many races. They have such fantastic race cars you can ever see. But, uh, <coughs> the Shelton right there is the Back in the day, in the old time <coughs> racing part, women weren't allowed in pits. And uh, they didn't allow women in pits up until probably the early 70s. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. And uh, anyway, she is the only woman that I have found so far. She drove in the powder push division, and she is the only woman that I found that race stopped. <laughs> in Paul and Ken. Now, if you want to get her autograph before she leaves, <laughs> and I, I, I bet there's more, but she's the only one I like. And uh, there's that right there. And uh, that's a feature winner. And uh, these cars here are, are really something else. This, this is in 2012. And this is Dwayne, and this is a go kart. And Dwayne was a, uh, he's a, uh, he, was, he was a something else in one of them, them cars. And I, I guess Frankie drove one of them too, didn't he? He didn't drive one, he owned one okay. and used Gene's driver to drive it. Uh, yeah. There's Gene, right there. <laughs> That's a young gene. Now, the <laughs> gentleman standing beside him is the one that was driving the Peach Bowl car. Okay, that's, okay. That's, that's the one that was in the Peach Bowl car. Larry okay. Hanson, uh, yeah. Uh, and there's Zach again. Zach's here with us, too. Yeah, and, I don't know where he went. And uh, that's the Peach, that's the, uh, it's the Talladega Short Track right there. <clears throat> and, uh, there you go. Now. Y'all ain't going to believe who this is. That, that picture is made in Florida. It says, it says, Johnny, 
That is Johnny East from the Little Bar. Johnny had a, had a quite a career of racing. I've got more pictures of him in, in, in other racing, but Johnny ran in what they call, some people call it ASA series, but it was really called a sportsman series. It's kind of like the Xfinity series is today, but just kind of a step below the NASCAR. But Red Farmer and you know, all the Allison boys and the Alabama gang and all of them ran in that thing back in the back in the cities. And, and Johnny was real successful in that. They raced all over the eastern United States. And uh, Johnny kept racing. He kept racing longer than I did. And uh, this is Johnny later on. Uh, there may be a date here somewhere. But this is a legend's car. And he won the race at the uh, Atlanta Speedway in that car. And, uh, and, uh, but Johnny kept racing on for a lot longer as far as age goes than, than I, I, I did. And he's, he's still got some of these race cars. He, he lives just the other side of Yorkville over in Polk County. And this ugly guy here, the reason this, this picture is in <coughs> This was made it for 24 hours of Daytona. And we raced, the, raced back in the days, you, you, you could configure the race car to go. You see these spoilers on here? When you raced in the 24 hour race, you could modify your car and put <coughs> wings and stuff on it and different motors, and put it run real fast. And uh, that was a real fast car right there. But that, that was made in, I believe it was 1980, uh, Daytona 24 hour road. And there's Johnny again down in Florida in an old shovel, it looked like. And uh, that was played back in the 60s, I'm sure. Now here's Shelton family. Lander, she's the only, yeah, that's you. Lander, <laughs> like I said, she's the only, only lady I found both in the top of the And these are just some old articles that uh, the Dallas dealer used to run. used to advertise, you know, when, when we went to races and stuff and, you know, set records and, you know, uh, this was made in, in the Savannah. I just want to race down there. And I, I want every race to ever race in Savannah in that car. And the reason being, I went down, and, you know, I don't know if you're going to hear this tale or not, but the first time I went to Savannah, Peter Gray put on a driving school. And he had all the celebrities, driving celebrities from all over the world came in. And I happened, I got signed up for some of that. And I had this car, and this is a factory Lotus Ford from the Lotus factory in England. And uh, I took it down there, and they had all these famous people that was going to sign. And they assigned me Manuel Fangio, who was the world champion Grand Prix driver. He drove for Maserati, Ferrari, everybody. He won three world championships. He was an old man back then. But anyway, he was a side to me. And uh, anyway, he liked my car. And uh, anyway, he watched me, you know, he was he giving driving instructions. Anyway, it, Savannah had a real kind of strange track. But anyway, came in the pits and he walked over to me and he said, uh, when are you accelerating out of the apex of the turn to the straightaway? I told him. He said, uh, you're doing it wrong. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, that straightaway don't start right there. He said, no. He said, no. He said, this starts at the other turn up the track. And I said, I have. And he <laughs> took me up and he showed me. He said, you go and enter the turn this way. When you get to apex of this turn, he pointed to you, he said, you aim for that point down at that other turn, and you'll never have to let it up. I thought, this guy's crazy. <coughs> but anyway, I 
tried it. It worked. And after that, I had always had the fastest car, always set the track records, and always won all the races at Savannah. And he didn't tell nobody, and I didn't tell nobody what we did. <laughs> but that, that, that was a lot of fun. All right, now this, this is a picture, this is a die cast. One of Charles Hardy's cars. Oh, his truck series. Charles has still got these trucks. And they got a shop full of them. And uh, they were a force to be continued with in the, in the Craft and Truck series. And uh, Johnny and Mike and them, they still got a lot of these cars. And if you ever get a chance, go over there and get them and show them to you. But that's a die cast. Car, and I'll show you another diecast here in a minute. Well, that's another, that's, this was at Road Atlanta. We won that race there. Now, this is something really unusual here. And I'm going to believe this. If y'all remember the county commissioner, Jim Watts, and, and Margie Watts, y'all remember them? Jim was a big NASCAR fan. Jim's grandson is Will Coates. Their daughter, Jill, married Terry Coates. Tim and Terry and uh, um, one of the Hunter boys have Hunter's body shop. Well, Will went to work <coughs> in North Carolina with Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm going to show you a picture of her in a minute. But this, this is given the wheel for his, for his, his excellent work on, he was a tire man, a tire specialist. And he went and said, this, if you get this, you've got to be the best tire guy in the world. And he, he won that. Uh, this is a die cast. Believe it or not, Aiken Mitchell Motor Company. Pity Aiken from Paul and Ken. Yes, they drive it. Fireball rocks. They won so many cars, many races of this car. This is a die cast. And it's autographed by Billy at the top. This is, a, this is an old die cast. Mm -hmm. And this is a Paulding County car. And they reissued this die cast car. You can, you can still get this car. And, and, uh, and, and the new edition still looks just like this. It's got the agent, Mitchell Motor Company, on it. Who would have thought they'd been from Paul and Ken? All right, here we go again. This is this is the NASCAR guys with the old suspension. That's him. And that's Will right there. That's uh, Jim Watson's grandson. He's uh, the guy that's, uh, and, and Will, I want to show you a picture of him in. He is the only guy from Paulding County who has a NASCAR championship. The only one I think. And not many people have a NASCAR championship ring, but he won it with a Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. And uh, there it is right there. How about that? He got a NASCAR championship ring. Uh, I've got some of this stuff here just randomly showing this, you know, entries for the these people, Paul and County people. <coughs> That's me right there. <laughs> uh, we used to do t like this and, and uh, you know, give away the fourth place and promote them. Everybody wants one of these. Uh, and I put this in there to show you how it used to be. Yeah. This is how it used to be. Now, I ran this circuit for 15 years. This is smoking Joe Cameron. He's smoking cigarettes. Back in the day, when we'd have races, they'd actually have girls that go out and give away free cigarettes. Now, you think they'd do that, man? But uh, that things were different back then, you know. All right, this is this is Will and this is Terry Coach. That's uh, <coughs> Mary Jill Will Will uh, uh, Will uh, Will 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 Will
Margie watches the dog right there. Uh, he's got some great colors too. Now this color, I'm going to show you, uh, this, this is kind of a, uh, getting ahead of putting a cart before the horse. But Donald back there in the back, Donald Hunter, sent me this picture from Road Atlanta a year or two ago. And he says, he says, Joe John Dennis, he's got and he sent me the picture, he says, what is that? You know, I told him, I said, Donald said, that's a, this is in the Venus Trans Am races. They have a, a series that they run Venus cars, and they have, actually have a race, and they, they call it the Venus Trans Am race. This is a replica of my car that I used to race 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they race it today in the Venus Trans Am race. Mm -hmm. and, the, <clears throat> and this is Will, this is one of the cars they won the championship in. Again, that's the number nine, that's the Elliot's car. And that, there's, there's the young Elliot right there. Mm -hmm. He's just a cutie. Yeah. That's coach is wearing. That's him again. That's the car. That's the, that car belonged to Bill Earnhardt Jr. And Rick Hendricks. I think Rick on the ball is Bill. All right, and, and here is another shelter. And that is uh, Jimmy Henderson. Now I gotta tell you about Jimmy Henderson. He's kin to me and, and all the Hendersons here. Jimmy's first job that he ever had in a bus shop, he worked for me at the Ford place. And uh, <clears throat> back when he was working for me, I had no race cars. And uh, I'll show you a picture of the car in a minute. You saw part of, uh, part of one of while ago, but uh, anyway. He come in to work on Monday morning after I'd been racing, and my race car would be sitting outside the shop. It'd be tall all pieces <laughs> every time. He come in and he said, "God, what am I gonna do?" I said, "You need to fix that car." And he said, "I got a race coming." Oh man! And anyway, Jimmy told me later on. He said, "You know what?" He said, "I, I could I could lay in the bed and dream, and I could sculpture." Ford Pinto race car out of Bondo in my dang dream and make it perfect. <laughs> he, he rebuilt it so many times, you know. But that's uh, another thing I'll talk about in just a minute, the uh, sponsorship. But that's, you know, you got to have sponsors. You, know, or you can't, these things are expensive to run. All right? That's Frankie and his brother. They're running late models up there. That's, that's some of the shelter guys. And this, now this is, this is something else right here. Yeah, better. You see the 227 cars? This is the ice boat in 2000. This is one of the biggest races we have in North Georgia. These cars ran first and second. You believe that? And uh, they're from Paulden County on Bullberry Rock Road. They beat everybody in the United States. So they 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 some they something else. And that ugly guy That's Jesus, isn't it? Is in a car. And this picture was made by a real famous photographer. I'm talking about one of the most famous photographers in this room. Let's raise your hand to see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was making a picture, picture of Jesus, you know, that, but it was That Steve. picture was made uh, 50 years ago. Yeah. I, I was young. <laughs> right, now, this car, this is all our sprint cars. If you see, it's Wildcat Auto Parts. Y'all remember that? That's John Arms over at Wildcat Auto Parts. His wife is Nancy. Nancy's daddy was being in Rachel 
If I showed you a picture of him <laughs> crashing the car at Daytona on the first lap, well, that was her day. Well, this this car here was sponsored by Wildcat and, and, all, and Bumper and Bumper all pro. Chris Rogers drove this car. I was crew chief on this car. And we won the 1996 Dixie Outlaw Championship in this car. And people wouldn't believe it. But this car, this car won. We bought the car from Jimmy Kite. Jimmy Kite was the engine car driver. And uh, the first three races we ran in it, we, we couldn't get it to go to third place is all we could get. Well, we crashed it down at Phoenix City, Alabama, and tore it all to pieces. And uh, uh, we got the frame apart. We thought about buying a new frame. And I thought, well, you had Jimmy, said, Jimmy Henderson and Wayne Seals was working for it. And I, they had a frame machine. I said, well, maybe we put this on a frame and straighten. So we, we got our plumb bobs out and tape measures. We put it on and straightened it. We put it back together. And what was about wrong with the car to start with, we couldn't make it win, it was beat. Even of them beat it, we didn't know. We had it straight. And after that, the car never off the road, ever. It was so competitive that the, the competition was most part by it. When we showed up, they were mad at us. But uh, John Arnold won uh, Dick's Outlaw Championship in that car. Uh, now here's a, here's a wild car. That's me. I'm probably the only guy that ever drove an open wheel car at Daytona Speedway. Uh, but you don't run open wheels much. But this car belonged to my old college roommate, his name is Robert Woodall. He was from Bill Record, he was a farmer still record. His brother was Steve Woodall the a dentist. I'm sure some of y'all have probably been to the dentist. Well, they had a great big race at Daytona, and Robert wanted me to drive the car. So I agreed. Uh, they started 84 cars. And when it threw the green flag, Five seconds after that, I knew why Robert wasn't driving that car. <laughs> it was wild. And anyway, we survived. And I think I wound up in about 11 places. But that, that's the only old well car I ever ran at Daytona. But that, that, was a, that was a wild race. And this is a guy I used to race with. I don't know if y'all recognize him or not. Uh, he made a movie or two, I find. But uh, me and him, uh, raced together. He was a great, great race car driver. And uh, we rode a road Atlanta one time and I was in my bus train and he was in a V28 and uh, that Cannon, Cam, Cam, uh, Cannon car. And um, we went into turn three <coughs> and we tangled up and crashed. And he got out and he was wanting to fight. <laughs> and we got into it. And, uh, the, uh, he accused me of blocking him, and I accused him of punting me. And anyway, I started to hit him, and I saw him eyes blue eyes, and I thought, man, I better not do that. <laughs> anyway, we rode back to the way, and we got to be friends later on. But it, as far as driving, he drove a race car until he was 82 years old. 82. He drove his Daytona in a 24-hour race at 82 years old. He's a really good race car driver. This is a movie that was made using a race car from Dallas, Georgia. My dad's car, one of his race cars. And Alan Hale, you know, the captain on Gilligan's Island, uh -huh. Roy Calhoun. <coughs> the drivers for the stunt, the, 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 a lot of the stories of Bob Daddy's car. Back in the days, you didn't have a green car, you didn't eat peanuts in the peanuts and stuff like that, and have a bad look. But the guys <laughs> eat peanuts in the peanuts, and he's driving Daddy's car. But he goes out and crashes, of course, he gets killed and all that stuff. But the stunt driver for the car was, was the 
named Bill Hembry. Bill's in the Hall of Fame. And uh, they couldn't get the car to turn over, so they built a ramp on the side of the uh, front straightaway, and Bill ran the car up over and he finally got to turn over. And then he poured gas on it, put dynamite in it, and blew it up, and gave it back to Daddy. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, Bill, he's a Hall of Fame driver, and he had, a, the reason I've got this is Paul and Ken connection. Bill raced at the Peach Bowl, and he had a car. It was a little, like a Ford <coughs> Vicky. It was run into modified class, and it was called a Flintstone Flyer. And it had a picture of Fred Flintstone, and it was made like the Flintstone cars, you know, where he ran with the Flintstone, had that all painted on. Every kid that went there wanted that car to win. <laughs> and if we was racing in and we had to get beat, I wanted that car to win. Everybody loved that car. Well, his son is Biddy Hamburg. He lives at Yorkville, and Biddy has that car. And he's restored it. Now, I don't know if he finished it or not, but whenever he gets that car finished, I want him to bring it to Dallas to one of our car shows we on on the on the the four Fridays, uh, four Saturdays uh, of the month up to court out. But that, is, that car is really a fascinating car. And that's, well, that's one reason I had that picture there. Right? But that is a movie. That's, you still get it on, you order it off of eBay. Um, that's something, one of them bad things happened to you. And, uh, I don't know where that's at. I think it was Ken or somewhere. All right, now this car, uh, this is a Paulin County car, and this was the first car that was ever folded that was run in the Kelly American series in the IMSA GT. And uh, I built that car, and uh, Ford didn't have uh, real powerful V6 motors. These are V6 cars. And I found them in England, they made them. B6 and a Capri 2 that you ran in Group B Rally. And I knew that motor would work, and I got forward to get me one of those, and that was a bad day. <laughs> right, now, this is a car that the wheel uh, coach was talking about having. This is a, a car that he works on now. They, they just got through running the ice boat down back in, in Pensacola. And these are super modified. And uh, this is a world class car. And uh, Phil, he's, he's, the, he's the chief uh, upkeeper of that car. And this car, this is with the Pinto that Jimmy Henderson made Bondo out of. You know. But the reason I've got this picture here is this is at Daytona qualifying in February. You see these people? I qualified that in a snowstorm in Daytona. And you, when you go to Daytona February, you need to bring your bathing suit and your lawn hat. But that was in a snowstorm in Daytona. Now this is the, another replica of my old car right here, the Joe Jones Ford car. Must have. Oh, yeah. This is no Arthur car. This is Steve Jones car. This is that's a daytime. That's an old banjo man. That's cool. That's Bill Yeah. And uh, this is Road Atlanta. And this is the car I tell you about right here. <coughs> this is a Shelby GT 350. I got that car from Claiborne Dart. And uh, he run Dart Research. Out of Atlanta, he owns Darden uh, restaurants now. Right? That chain, you know, are raised by the river and all that stuff. And anyway, we raced that car, and, and, and it, it was a, a, a really nice car. I got the uh, the engine and stuff. I got all the parts from the, the Elliott boys up in the lobby. And, uh, and stuff. That's, that's the one they made the replica out of. This is the car I was racing against. This is actually a Boss 302. That's a real rare car. 
Well, your road Atlanta is really dangerous back in the old days. They didn't have cars where you, you hit a dirt bank and your car would stop. A lot of people got killed over the land back then. And they didn't have chicane. You come out of the back straight away in the big car, you could come on 30 mile an hour. It was, it was dangerous. That's an expensive car. There's Nick Phillips. Y'all remember Wayne Phillips had the hard rush over? That is Wayne's son. And he just had one uh, uh, sportsman race up at Dixon. Now this guy here, he, he uh, drove the sprint car that Wild get auto parts, that's him. And of course that's me. And anyway, Nick was a great, great race car driver. What's what we lucky is because he's got DNA tire and, and uh, uh, <coughs> good and then they, they were really big in the racing too. But uh, what I liked about Nick, when he got through racing, Get ready for the next race. You just had to wash the mud off the car. Most people tear them all over there. Nick didn't tear his car over This young fella right here is standing. I don't know if y'all know what this is. I know anybody, what it is. Did anybody watch Smokey in the <coughs> yeah. That is the roller coaster they blew up on Smokey in the bank. That's the Lakewood Speedway. Yeah. This car here, George Alford <coughs> built it, and I helped George see it, I painted it. And we took it to Lakewood, and Homer Lee, Homer Lee was the mayor of Hyman. Well, Homer promoted the Lakewood race. <coughs> and we took this car down there, and uh, Homer's brother-in-law drove the car. His name was uh, uh, Joe Thurman, and he was the modified uh, Eastern uh, track champion. Uh, not, he was the champion, modified driver. Right? That was his brother-in-law. He had another brother. His name was George, and he was a nice car. He was a modified champion. Right? And Homer's wife's name was Big. The reason I'm saying all this, Betty's brother George and a grand, has his grandson is named Austin Singer, which that would make him Homer Reagan's great nephew. He drives the number two car for pitch duration in NASCAR now. And he has to get a suspension from Fred Stokes' grandson from Ball and Camp. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the linear connection to all that bunch right there. I think you have I've got anything else here. I ain't got any more pictures, but I'm, I'm going to give you a few things. <laughs> I, I made some notes here. I'm going to talk about a few people. There's a fella from Rome, Georgia. His name is Henry Gray. And he has just been inducted into the Georgia Automobile Racing Hall of Fame. And the reason he got there is because all of Hundreds of races he ran in Phoenix and ran good. To do that, you have to have a master's engine builder. And his engine builder was from Pauline County. And the engine builder's name was Preston Barnett. And I know everybody, a lot of people here know Preston Barnett. But Preston had the Napa store. Over on a bypass. That's the first Napa store I ever saw. I had a girl work for him named Kathy. I don't remember. She still probably works for him. I don't know. But anyway, I go over there and of course I was building an engine too. I go in and I ask Kathy, I said, Where's Preston? He said, He's back in the back. Well, I go back in the back. <coughs> he had kind of like a clean room. He built his engine. Well, I go back. I was fascinated with him, what he was doing. He, he was a lot sharper than I was. But Preston, uh, if you ever get a 
Collin County Hall of Fame for injured builders, Preston's going to be the first to win that. But uh, I just wanted to mention him as far as racing goes. Uh, another one was Gary Atchison. I don't know if any of y'all remember Gary. Gary had a, 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 a welding fabrication shop over by Puckett's Body Shop out by the plant. And if you needed chassis work bill or needed a road cage work bill, I bet, I bet he built a dozen road cages for me. He, he was absolutely great, great fabricator. And uh, I want to mention J.W. Shackle. I don't know if y'all remember J.W. or not, but J.W. took up tickets for the, uh, and money for the drag strip. And I think he took up tickets for the uh, Dash Lebo. And uh, he, uh, he worked in racing all his, you know, forever. And his son, Ricky, was the announcer over the drag strip. And of course, we got John Clark back here in the back. And I'm going to tell you a tale about John. John was the announcer at Woodstock running all over the track. But I started right here in Pauling County. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and anyway, a friend of mine's name was Jimmy Marsteller. And Jimmy was a, he was an announcer for all the big races. He put on a, he promoted for the Habitat Theory. Well, he telling me about uh, John, and he said that John wanted to you know, learn how to do announcing. And, uh, Said he was sitting in the booth with him and said he got ready to announce everything and said, uh, Jimmy said, well, I said, John, I've got to go to the bathroom. He said, I'll be back in a minute. You go ahead and finish the book. He said he never went back. So they ran the race and John didn't have a choice except to do the announcing and said, that's how he got cranked up. Is that true? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a true story. But Jimmy, but Jimmy he, he announced it every he, he announced the Big Bell Franks. Oh, yeah. He, you know, back he, in the day. Jimmy was. And he, he if, was. if you wanted to put people in the grandstand, you hired Jimmy Mosley. Oh, yeah, that's right. He, he was. And if you wanted to make money, you hired Jimmy Mosley. And, and another, and as far as families go, another thing you, you miss out on, the people take up money, the people announce, and you go to these tracks for the People are running the concessions man. I mean, they like at the drag strip. All the Hardy girls, every time you went there, they were always there. They worked at Bay, I mean, it was in, in uh, Joyce Lee, uh, Joyce Lane. She was always there. And they just, they, they just worked and, 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 they, and they just contribute to, the, to, to everybody there. Um, you got Herschel Hicks, and, you know, he, Maintained the drag strip. You got Wendell A. there. He was a starter over there. And uh, uh, got and all these drag racers that show up, like <coughs> Trixie Carroll and Wayne Leggett and Delon Holland and, and you know just everybody. And uh, uh, anyway, I'm I, I, I'm missing so many people. It's just you know just. If anybody knows it, but we're going to put this, I think, out on uh, video and have the pictures on video where you can see them. And, and if anybody runs into people that we, we miss, if they get in contact with us, we make it just bigger and bigger of how many we, we're going to you know, we get together with it. But I'm just scratching the surface. Yeah, you know, this, this is just a, a little, a tiny little show of what, what goes on. And if, if, if you've never been involved in motor racing, you, you, you know what you're really missing. But, uh, <coughs> I appreciate all the Aikens being here and all the announcer and Donald Hunter back there and all of them. And they tore the drag strip up and spent a million dollars blowing motors up over there. And, and we've even got one guy back here in the back just moved to Dallas to California and Winston Western, the NASCAR driver. And uh, 
he just bought a place up on uh, Confederate Avenue. Up there. And, uh, but anyway, uh, if y'all got any questions, y'all can have them. The old Southeastern International Drive Trip is being cleared off right now. Right over there in Pike, kind of like. Anybody know what's going to go in there? There's the owner right there. You know what's going to go in? What are they going to build over at the drag strip, you know? And she sold it, so I we were probably subdivision. It might be a subdivision. I guess. I just have to be by there and play it. That, that's Marlon's daughter. Right oh, okay. <laughs> I've got a million miles around <laughs> Steve, I, I know everybody's going to be interested in that, uh, that event, uh, the drag strip in 1965. Oh, yeah. Uh, back in 1965, February 28th, uh, Richard Petty uh, had a uh, quick race in the NASCAR because they had banned his Henry Moore, and he was, they were mad about it, so he quit, and they started racing, uh, drag racing, he put, he was using that same motor in the drag racing car, and the car was called 43 G, instead of 43, what well, he had, it was a Barracuda, and they had a big, big match race with that, Marvin and all them did, and I was over, I worked that way, <coughs> I was with John's brother, uh, Sam. Sam was running the ambulance. And uh, we were up at the start finish, at the finish line. And Peter came up here racing a guy named Artie Bedford. And uh, they uh, started the race and just <coughs> got just a few feet off the start line. And it looked to me like an axle broke in Richard's car. And it turned that car into the crowd. There was over 10,000 people there. And they wasn't, they, 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 they were just lined up head to head, maybe 20 deep. And this car was launched up in the air and landed in that crowd. And how it didn't kill 100 people, I don't know. But one, one little boy died, he died from a piece of the car coming off. It, it hurt some people, but it, nobody got killed since that little boy. I told John Brother, Sam up there, I said, Sam, you know, when it happened, it happened to like that. I told Sam, I said, you need to get down and said, hey, this people bash, this is bad. And uh, he went down there. And uh, anyway, they uh, Plymouth had that car. And we had to hide that car. They didn't want nobody to look at it. They came back the next morning. They were there at Bayline to get that call. And, uh, anyway, it's uh, that, that's one of the, that, that's the biggest crowd I ever saw over that track was that day that had that race over there. But uh, if you ever, you can look it up on YouTube and stuff, and that show, so all kinds of pictures of that thing. But it says a small town in Georgia. It doesn't yeah. say that. Yeah, I don't say it. that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking about that, uh, being of addiction and all, we had Richard up there how many times? He raced once and he came by for yeah. an autograph. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I got there real early as I always do. And uh, we were sitting there talking and introduced myself and everything. And so we, we, we were sitting there talking and he said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Dallas, Georgia. And uh, we talked about that for a minute. And he said that was one of the worst days of his life. I'm sure it was. And, uh, you know, uh, we sit there and talked. And, uh, you know, that was just one of the things that happened. And there's nothing that nobody can do to, to fix it. But uh, he was very... I mean, it, it affected him as much as it affected here, people out here. Well, speak, speaking of celebrities, Richard Petty being a celebrity, at the Dallas Speedbone, the 
there used to be a series on there's still on great enough now called uh, uh, had Daisy Arnaz in it. Uh, what was the name of that cowboy movie he was in? Daisy Arnaz. Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. Well, Dallas Speedwell had a promotion <laughs> one time, and he was going to do a meet and greet over there. Jim Arnaz. Was it Jim Arnaz? Okay. Yeah, that's, I guess that's it. But anyway, it was a gun smoke guy. He was a great big guy. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, my dad was going to drive him around in, in the uh, racetrack and he had a little early bird, on, like a 56 Thunderbird. And I never will forget it because I was a you know, young guy on me. I couldn't believe how big he was. He was just a giant guy. Well, he put him in the Thunderbird and drove him around, and he was so big when he drove him around, riding in that Thunderbird, his head was this high above the windshield. That's how big <laughs> this guy was. But anyway, we had, so, and then he had all, he signed autographs and everything. But, you know, people like that showed up at the racetracks all the time. You know, they put on the motion. And, uh, you got any pictures of that Mustang? Yeah. That's that, that, that Sonny, his daddy, Buddy Ranch, his buddy's one I tell you about having uh, uh, he drove uh, uh, race cars in Atlanta and all that stuff and Dodge and Buddy was a great guy. He, I, he was mad, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was good. It's old school. Yeah. 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 And George Day. See you, son. Steve, can I tell you two, two things, two sure. quick things? You mentioned Benny Peacock. Yep. He used to hang around over at the racetrack when those guys were down there practicing and everything. Of course, he wasn't there during Sunday, but he promoted his church among those race car drivers. And on Sunday night, after you know all the racing during the day, on Sunday night, there'd be a lot of race car drivers at the First Baptist Church in Dallas. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to tell you one thing about George Osborne, one of my favorite people. He was down at the Speed Bowl, Dallas Speed Bowl, practicing with one of the cars that he built. And I was down there watching him, and he was really, you know, he was flying around that racetrack. And then the number two turn, he lost it, and it rolled about three or four times. But the thing about it that scared the heck out of me was, he was strapped in his seat. His seat broke loose, and he was in that car with it, it rolled, and I thought, oh my gosh, he's dead. But he crawled out of that thing, and he was beat up pretty bad, but he was okay. No bones broken. Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. You know, that 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 was kind of common back then. Uh, George was down at the Ford place one time and had a, uh, in that 412 car that her daddy was sponsored. And uh, they just put a, a new engine in or something. And George got in it. I never will forget this. I'm standing there watching. But George gets in it and just sits down in that puts they, they don't have much seat belts in them anyway. And he gets in and he takes off and gets out on 278 and four boards and when he did it hooks up. And this car turned a flip. I'm talking about it just flipped over. And George, when it's turning over, falls out. Well, he's sitting in the road and this car is turning flips going down the bike. And George is sitting there, you know, sitting on the road. And I walked over and said, you all right? He said, yeah, I'm all right. I ain't car. Tore my car up. <laughs> <laughs> you showed a picture of a, a fight at the Dallas Speed Bowl, too. There was one just about every Sunday <laughs> down there. And there was one time that the railroad, people used to line up along the railroad. That's where you put that fence up. For yeah, the, rail, the railroad folks told, told Aiken and said, you know, you need to keep those people off the railroad because if a train will come through there, it's going to kill something somebody and there was one time that they were they were all lined up along the railroad and there was a motorcycle gang out of, I've called them a gang there was about eight or ten of them out of Atlanta up there and Uncle Jody went up there to tell them to get off the railroad and they picked him up and threw him down the bank and he crawled back up the bank and they threw him back down it again and my mother started yelling go over and help Jody they're you know whatever else she said but anyway a bunch of us Aikens headed out that way, and I was among them, and uh, after we got up there and got into the scuffle, 
I chased one of them down the railroad bank and I was on top of him and he just got my head and pulled it down and started chewing on this ear right here. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody wants to feel the good <laughs> Back in the day, if you broke a school bus, you bought a school bus. You owned it, and the county paid you so much a mile. Well, <clears throat> Daddy was getting ready to, they had a car that had a big race at Asheville, Weaverville, North Carolina. And uh, George was driving the car, and so Buddy took his school bus, and a bunch of us got on the school bus, and we went to the race on the following county school bus. And uh, had all old Butler boys, Butler cars, <coughs> all them boys, that I many, everybody. Well, we get up there, and uh, they start to race, and there's there's no wall between where you pit and the race truck. And we back the truck up there, and there's a couple of hitch boys hiring with us, and they were sitting on the back of the truck, and I was too. Well, they, the track started coming apart. Big chunks of concrete started coming apart, and uh, George was getting ready for a pit stop, so I, I got the wagon out and the gas cans, and I was going to go gas up the gas cans so we could do a pit stop. Well, my dad come up there and he said, "Where are you going?" And I told him. He said, "Don't you get back on that truck." I said, "Why?" And he said, "This track turned up, so these cars." The tie rod ends are breaking and said, somebody's going to come through there and hit that damn truck. And or hit, or not that truck, but a truck. And because they're all pit guys on that truck. Well, they, hey, I had to walk as far as here that day. As, and here come a car flying through there, one of the race cars. Broke suspension on it. And it hits that truck we're sitting on. And it knocks that truck into a bleeding. And about that same time, George is going in to turn three, one and three and four. Well, Nelson Stacy was racing down there, and Nelson's suspension breaks, and the car jumps on top of George's car, Dad's car, and there's a picture of it somewhere. And Nelson's car is on top of George's car, and they go all the way through the turn, and finally Nelson's car falls off of George's car. And about that time they stopped the race. Well, the race wasn't even high folks. They had to track all the pieces. Well, people wanted your money back. And it's the words kept getting worse. And they wouldn't pay the driver. They wouldn't pay the, they wouldn't pay the driver. They wouldn't give people money back. Well, anyway, the fight started. Well, they called the fire department to come out there and hose everybody down. <laughs> Stop. When the fire truck gets out there, and the fire truck's there, and they start to turn the water on, and the people get on the fire truck and pull the axes off and chop all the hoses up on the fire truck. <laughs>